20 years of MSF here in uh, Kailicha and in South Africa. Of course, uh, it's difficult to, to compare the situation uh, that we faced initially. No treatment. People, a thousand deaths per day uh, from uh, uh, advanced HIV. Uh, the, the cemetery of Kailicha completely congested. And worse, this paranoia about the disease. There were random checks by the police because uh, antiretroviral drugs were not in the public sector, they were only at MSF. And the department didn't want MSF to use uh, AZT. They will come into the clinic and check in the clinic and we used not to put AZT in the clinic because we know that they will be coming, they can come at any time. So we used to hide AZT from the MSF cars and boots. And Francis' car will also be a car boot. We want the government to take our hands and to work with us. We are saying that the government can help us. Zaki Ahmed, he one day called me uh, in 2002, beginning 2002, saying, Eric, uh, do you want to meet with uh, Nelson Mandela? You know, the kind of call uh, you get on a Friday evening. <laughs> and he said, if, if you want to, come tomorrow morning. You'll find it at my place. So, of course, <laughs> I rushed here the next morning and I could have a, 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 a little discussion. I, I begged, uh, Madiba, can you please come to rescue and visit our clinics? And uh, he said, yeah, let's, let's make a plan. And uh, a month later, he arrived in, uh, in Kailicha inside C clinic. We had asked Matthew Damani, uh, one of our first clients, to offer him the T-shirt we were expecting, a picture of Madiba with the t-shirt in hands. And then suddenly there was a moment of panic. What, what, what is happening here? And everybody was suddenly uh, in tears because he took his shirt off. And he had a shirt, not like this, but you know, the famous Mandela shirts. Put the t-shirt on and that brought that famous picture where Mandela, you could not be more outspoken, putting the t-shirt HIV positive. He was saying in front of everyone, and in a very clear-cut way, he, treat HIV, that's the best thing you can do. It's unacceptable. So many people are, are dying, and we don't do anything. In 2003, um, one of my we called each other cousins, I don't know why, but we, we called each other cousins. Lonam Lofane, she was a brave young woman. She went with her other friends to a tavern who was open about her HIV status. So when she said that, they started beating her up. She was raped. They beat her up. And I could see when I got there, I just saw a lot of blood. Lona died immediately after that. And that was something that I wanted to change. Um, we had to walk around the streets and do door-to-door -door, um, sessions so that we gave people information about what happened and the causes of rape and what HIV is. So we used to make sure that all these houses had information and everyone who stayed in this street um, was well informed when it comes to um, the virus and what was happening. We started working at Ubuntu in these containers or in these two clinics. One clinic was for TB and the other clinic was for HIV. We decided both TB and HIV that we have to break in the walls of these two containers in order to have one big thing. That is how we started to integrate TB and HIV. We, were, we have started all the differentiated programs that are now globally accepted. 
We started all them from this clinic that is Ubuntu Clinic. Ubuntu Kutala! <laughs> I was diagnosed in 2004 as HIV positive. I was very sick. Uh, I had to be. I went to Ubuntu clinic because of a friend of my brother to start a treatment, uh, TB treatment and HIV treatment. Every time when I'm coming from the clinic, there was something new that I know about HIV. There was something new that I know about the treatment. So it interested me and get my intention. There and then they take me to the program that called People Living with HIV and AIDS program. MSF come up with something called a Charis Club. It was for those people that already in one year on treatment, not having any problems, they were not sick. They were just to go there to the clinic to pick up the medication. I think it was 2009, we were already having about 13 clubs. So it was, it was so successful uh, in that regard because today we have a children's club all over South Africa and uh, it's one of the very special thing. MSF always came in and putting the, the patient first and for me I'll say I'm very proud to be a part of uh, something that makes me each and every time said to myself you are a part of uh, a change. Bending the Cave project uh, started in 2011 in Eshowe and Mbongolwane. The intention of the project was to implement interventions that would reduce the HIV infection in the community. For us as, as MSF, we, we wanted to exceed the 1990. We wish we could achieve 100% where well, we have everyone testing. And when you say 90% has tested, but the key is you should have 90% retained in care, virally suppressed. Because when someone is virally suppressed, it means they are lowering the chances of spreading the virus. When we were starting our project in 2011, it was people were not really open to talk about HIV in this uh, place, in this community. Mostly the community leaders are males. For them as males, it was not easy for them to go to the clinics. And also they did not want to talk about HIV. So there was a survey that was, that was done to, to ask men around the area how they feel about introducing or maybe having a clinic that will be for men only. We chose the tax rank because that is where they come uh, for transport and with that time that they get, they just pop in and get their treatment. This is our male wellness uh, site which is here in Eshowe in the tax rank. They get help uh, immediately, there is no long queues. As you can see, we only have uh, males because we know that males usually they don't want to go to other facilities where they, it's only female nurses. A show project has achieved 90, 94, 95. At first it didn't sink in, we were like, hmm, hmm? And then we were like, Kaibo, did we really achieve the 1990 beyond what it was set for? And we were so excited. We've done it. We have done it because we've worked with the community. So this was an exciting moment. We were like, okay, we are happy now. Maybe we should close doors. <laughs>